on Mondays are, are real estate investing. Um, we have the one and only Paul Lee that joins us on Mondays. Tuesdays we talk about business growth regardless of what business or industry we're in. We talk about how to grow your business, maybe how to shift or adapt your business in these, these times that we find us in. On Wednesdays, we talk about the speaking, coaching, consulting industry specifically, how you need to adapt, how you need to change, how you need to be coaching people, um, how you need to be, um, you know, building that audience. On Thursdays, we... Francie, you're echoing. You're echoing. The comments are echoing. Is Jay... Am I echoing? echoing? Well, you are. I'm not. Everybody can... Are you hearing me echo or is it just Francie? It's just me. I already told you that. Okay. Well, let me take over. So... Hello, everybody. Welcome to a webinar as Francie self imposed herself, not only a core team, but an echo. If you are tuning in, you're in for the treat. Every single day from Monday to uh, Saturday, I've been doing free webinars to inspire. No big pitch at the end. Monday is about properties. Tuesdays is about business growth, getting more clients and scaling. Wednesday, speaker, coaches, consultant. Thursday, when Francie decides not to echo herself, she does online marketing uh, and sales. And on Thursday, Your Money Matters, yesterday with Charlie. And today, every week, one of my coaches who coaches me comes on and coaches you. Last week, Hugh Hilton. But today, we have the main event. Now, before I start, this is not about politics. The word Donald Trump will be mentioned. And I don't want people to start freaking out, right? This is not a time to be criticizing. This is a time to come together, right? The enemy is not our politicians. The enemy is not your haters. The enemy is the coronavirus, not only on a health uh, uh, you know, scale, but also on a business scale. People are dying. People's businesses are dying. So I really don't care about your political beliefs because I'm not here. I don't care if you love him and I don't care if you like him. This is not what this is about. But this man, I used to watch him on The Celebrity Apprentice and uh, or The Apprentice back then and season one, Bill Rancic. And then season two, um, I decided to uh, apply on season three to get onto The Apprentice. And I, I did fill out all the paperwork and uh, I, 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 was all, I did the interview, I, I did all these things and then I decided not to do it because my business will start to take off. And I regretted that for a long time initially, even though my business was taken off and one day, uh, I'm at home, I wake up and I'm like, I'm going to go meet Donald Trump at the time. He wasn't president. I didn't know he was going to be president. So everybody calm down. And I got a ticket, went straight to the airport, landed, had actually never been to New York City, went to Fifth Avenue, went to the elevator. And there's a security elevator said, well, who would you like to see? And I'm like, I, my stutter came back. I'm like, mm, mm. I was trying to say Donald Trump. I'm like, mm, mm. And then there was a, a, a book stiletto on the right hand side. And it was called Billionaire Lessons for the Small Investor. And that was George Ross. And uh, I'm like, George Ross. And they called up and they said, Mr. Ross, we'll see you. And they pressed the 26th floor. For those of you who know, 26th floor is actually where, where uh, Donald Trump's office was, President Trump's office. And I get in, I open the door and I'll never forget. There was a, a little squint as I'm walking, like a little like, you know, and I'm like, George, how are you? Long time no see. And he looked at me like, yeah, 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 sit down. So he's, I'm, and I'm like, right away, how you been? And, and you know, how are the grandkids? And we talked for about 45 minutes. And he goes, can I ask you a personal question? I'm like, George, whatever you want. He goes, who the fuck are you? And I never forgot that. I'm like, I'm JT Fox. He goes, but where have we met before? I'm like, no, we're meeting now. No, no, you said you had seen me before. I was like, yes, on TV last week. And the look of disappointment of like that look, probably when my parents were expecting a baby girl and I came out, that was that look. I'm sure it was. And security protocols change. I'm personally responsible for those, um, these security. Uh, and, you know, it's a very long story about what happened. But eventually, um, George uh, did our first event together and and then ended up being my coach. He was at the first mega success, which was mega partnering back there, the second one. And my whole celebrity branding came about because of George Ross. Uh, everything I know about celebrity branding, we've been in my life for 10 years. He's still my coach, uh, right-hand man, uh, 92 years old. He actually coaches many of my clients when I do events, a top 1% top experience. 
So everybody talks about my no BS, no bullshit. George is 100% no BS, says it how it is. 92 years old, still going strong, has the energy of a 40 year old. And I'm not joking about that. Um, in fact, uh, we should have been uh, last week in Vancouver coaching people and then all of us and things goes on. Um, and he says, I'm the greatest thing that ever happened to him, even though he worked for President Trump for 47 odd years. Uh, George, how are you? I am fine and I see that you're, you're also embellish. I, I don't know, there's no embellishing, George, but here's the thing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom you in here since we're a bit on YouTube here. So George, I see before you start, there's a picture of me. George, there's a picture of me in the background. Can you, the, I see a picture of me. Let me zoom in on YouTube so everybody could see. Right there, that is me. Now, I did not know you had a picture of me, George. So explain the meaning of the picture of me. Oh, yes, can you see the picture or I got it facing the wall? Oh, no, I can see it. I can see it. it it's, it's, it's right there in the front. Okay. So, George, what is your story here? So that in case people don't know you uh, the first time. part of the story was made up last week and that was the following I'm sitting in my dining room and I get a call and I see it says Washington DC so at that point so I says Washington DC so I figure it's a crank call so I get on and I say uh, yes and they said is this George Ross and I said yes who is this she says the president of the United States wants to talk to you he was in a room with full people and he wanted to know how Billy and I were. And the reason it got back is somebody, somebody had mentioned The Apprentice. And they said, oh, yeah, George, I know him. I loved him. He was a voice of reason. He always told it like it was. And I spoke to the president for a few minutes. And after, with everything else going on, he, just, he found time to speak to me and to speak to Billy to find out. And I think that says something about the man, whether we like him or we don't. So George, uh, in case a lot of people know you, they've seen you at Mega Success, uh, briefly go back to your life experience, your background, so we put this in context here today. Well, well good time. we don't have that much time for the life experience in the background. It, as, as things turned out, as it started out, I wasn't gonna be where I am now or doing what I was doing. I was gonna be an engineer, and I was, but my father died at an early age and changed. So my whole career changed and ultimately I became a lawyer, which I hadn't anticipated. And it happened that the first uh, law firm that I joined was a real estate firm. And they had major clients. And from there on, it's been blocked into a, a law firm with 120 lawyers, of which I was one of the uh, head men. And we had major clients, among them was Donald Trump and his father. And it grew from there. And uh, I was with Donald for a long period of time. I've been with him about 47 years, all on and off. But uh, when I was ready to retire, he talked me out of retiring and asked me to come with him as an advisor. And the reason he liked me, because I told him like, it, like it, I thought it was, not necessarily what he wanted to hear. He couldn't, ha couldn't fire because he never hired me. I was an advisor and it was good for 16 years until he decided to run for president. And I said, that's a good time for me to retire. So, uh, but we've still been in contact and I got good relationship. And uh, The Apprentice certainly made it. When you got 20 million people watching you on television, you become a star or a celebrity, celebrity. And that was, that, that's really what did it. And it's continued to this day. And that's basically how, uh, how we met. And uh, from the fateful day when I met, met you, you changed uh, my life because you needed so much help. And uh, I'm a pussycat when it comes to helping people. I, I, I would not describe our coaching calls as pussycat. Uh, the amount of time you... No, no, the call with you is different. Yes, the call with me is different. Uh, and by the way, let's, let's segue to that, George. I've been doing on Instagram some live coaching on Facebook every single day, seven days a week. And you've seen my style of coaching. Uh, and to be honest with you, I mean, I may be a little bit more aggressive than you, but the no BS style is something I learned from you about just tell people how it is and people could take it. Can you talk about, you know, some people want it fluffy or nice or, or, or maybe you know my style of coaching very well because you and I have coached together alongside of our clients. So if you can maybe explain about the idea of no bullshit coaching and, and how important it is to be told how it is and, and maybe from your perspective. 
and basically I think your style is good. It's a, you call it tough love, call it what you want. But I think all the people that are, that are here and are listening at this point, hey, business is tough. The world is tough. It's no place at that point for to be nice and to make it. A, it's tough. You want to survive at that. You got to be. You got to be tough and take whatever advice is, is appropriate, whether you like it or you don't like it. The main thing is to get somebody who's who you can trust and who gives it to you like it is, not the way you may want to hear it. And that's a, it's, a lot of people don't want to do that. They like to hear it nice, and you, you got to make nice. The world is not nice. It's a tough place, and you have to. You want to survive. You got to keep up with it. Simple as that. So, George, um, having seen a lot of entrepreneurs, obviously made for TV with the Celebrity Apprentice, um, and throughout your, God, how many years you've been in business? Over 60 plus, 60. 60 plus years. What's the difference in your opinion between someone that is successful or becoming successful and someone that's not from your perspective? Oh, that's a good, that's good. I think that's, that's a great question, but it's very easy. The one that's successful and the one that's daring will take chances and uh, do, take, do something that other people might not want to do but are afraid to do and then try it. You learn more from failure than you ever learn from success. The successful people at this point, the successful people are those that have failed and got up and said, what did I do wrong and figure out to improve it. And they're the ones that do it. Most people at that point are afraid of failing and uh, as a result, they do very little. Now, George, you and, and, and I'm going to talk about you did not think, as a lot of people, I mean, less than 1% thought that the president, Donald Trump, would actually win. Um, and can you exp- and then you left, you left and you call me. I remember one day you call me in Singapore and you're like, you know, hey, are you serious about taking your business to the next level? I'm like, uh, yeah. He goes, are, are you know, are you, do you want more of my help? And I'm thinking I thought this was a catch 22 or something like that. And I remember you said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to retire. And if you want me, then I'll come help you exactly like I did for, for the, for Donald or the president now. And, you know, so from your perspective, why did you think that he would not become president? I mean, listen, one, 1% of the people thought he would. So, but. No, I did not think, uh, uh, I, I did not think he would be president for a couple, for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is he is a very successful businessman. He's not a politician. That's the first thing. Is politicians become presidents, not usually businessmen. And the next thing is, is, is he has a very tough style. When he makes a decision, he sticks by it, as difficult as it may be. And then he convinces other people. He also, at that point, has a tendency to be abrasive. If somebody goes after him, he fights back. That's not really what a good politician does. You're gonna try to make nice to everybody. He's very, very thoughtful, very mindful. He, I knew his lifestyle. That this was not necessarily necessarily good for president. Anybody, any president who gets up at four o'clock in the morning to read all the newspapers at that point, to me, is not a politician. And I didn't think that was going to, it's, it's what he did at the, at the head of the Trump organization was, was fabulous. And I just said it didn't fit into politics. But if somebody asked me, and they had, what do I think is his greatest attribute? And I said, he has the ability to pick good people and delegate and let them run with the ball. He is not a micromanager. And that's really why it came up. So when he came to his, his campaign, he was, he get the people, let him run, not a micromanager. He was there only when he was to be seen. And I think that that's the key to anyone who's successful in an organization. If the organization can only run because of you, you've got no organization. It has to be something that will run without you. And only if you make the major decision. And uh, that I knew it was, but I think the public wasn't ready to do it. But of course, uh, you had Hillary. Hillary. She was an easy target. And it turned not an easy target, everything that came out. And I think what really made his election was when he came out and he said, what have you got to lose? convinced the number of the people, the, the, the voting people in the United States did yes, that's worth a chance. Let's go with somebody that's tough. We don't know enough about him. We don't like him. We don't him, but I think he's a good, I think he's a leader and that's better than to have a crooked politician. Um, George, y- you taught me and being around you personal branding. 
um, you know, that that's a lot of my branding and, and you were my first celebrity, which ironically turned into the empire that we have now, if it wasn't for you, the, the, the power of the celebrity and the show and everything. Talk to us from your perspective. I mean, President Trump was the first one in his buildings to put his name on everything, whether it's self-serving or ego. They were worth more than other properties. Um, so talk about from your perspective, how did personal branding evolve through what you've learned, i.e. all the way from, you know, Donald Trump, the 27-year-old developer to, you know, the, then the TV, and then the president, and then me, just your views on branding and the importance of it. Yeah, well, branding, which was, uh, branding basically made Trump, or Trump made branding, whatever, whatever, any way you want to put it. His style was entirely different. He started out, when he was 27, did the first deal. He said, I am going to do things that nobody else said could be done, and I'm going to make my way by doing the unusual, but I'm going to do it better. So his key, or his brand, was pure luxury. I'm going to sell luxury, and the Trump brand is going to be luxury. And that was, that was his lifestyle, and that's exactly what he's done, and it has. You look at his buildings, they are spectacular. You look at it, and ultimately, at one time, uh, after The Apprentice, and you had uh, so, many, so many people were involved, that I got involved, uh, Donald said, George, I want a brand, I want you to handle a brand, Trump. And I said, Donald, I don't know anything about, uh, about branding, or I don't know anything about that. He says, good, you do it, you'll learn it. And that started, but it had to be a come out with the best product that people will recognize. So if you look and say the name Trump, the name Trump is synonymous with pure luxury. And that was where he branded it. And that's what he, that's, they were very successful doing it. And he could sell apartments at twice the price of somebody else because it was in a Trump building. So that was his brand. He got it out there. People understood it and became very successful and it became part of the, with the Apprentice, and then from the Apprentice, he carried on. That when twenty million people watch you, yeah, they like your style. They may not like you, and that's that's what happened. It was interesting. He did not anticipate he would be president, and I would. I certainly didn't think he'd make it, but he has, and he's there. And uh, there are things I like about him, things I still don't like about him. If he asked me, but hey, you buy the whole ball of wax. Where do you buy wax, George? Because I, I, I went to the store. Hey, where do you buy a ball of wax? I'm joking. I, I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, I, 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 I had you stuttering a little bit here. So, so um, George, pre-apprentice, because I think the brand Donald Trump changed with the TV, obviously. So pre-apprentice, think of it as just a real estate developer, uh, a golf course operator, when you were doing deals pre-apprentice, what was the biggest challenge that President Trump as a businessman, entrepreneur was facing and, and how were you dealing with it? Well, I think the, the, the biggest one he was facing, first of all, he had, uh, had, a, had a crawl out of a, a, time, one of a bad time when he was in real trouble. And <clears throat> then uh, basically crawl, crawl out of that and convince people <clears throat> of this of his ability to, to, to handle the unknown as bad as it is. So he, this is to convince them that he had the personality that he was the one that would ultimately you should use. And that was what that was, which is what he did. And he surrounded himself with an organization that could do what he had in mind. He had the idea, but he had an organization that says, good, go do it. So at that time, when he asked me, he said, to, to do something, he never told, never gave me any more information other than the basic deal. And then when I put it on his desk, and he said, what's this? I says, this is what you wanted. He says, what is it? I says, sign it. That's the end of the story. And that's what it is. You can do an awful lot of deals if you don't do them yourself. And you have an organization to work for you. So um, let's talk about the situation that's happening now. Uh, George, you've seen everything. Uh, by the way, for those of you who are tuning in, don't know, uh, George Ross, celebrity apprentice, uh, judge, best-selling author of two books, one of my a favorite books is The Billionaire Investor for the Small Investor. It's a great book. Um, and also architect of one of the greatest real estate deal of all time, 40 Wall Street, and was involved in that. Um, and also was President Trump's right-hand man, the businessman, not the politician, for 47 years. He's been my coach for 10. His life really began 10 years ago when we met. Um, so, George, you've seen everything, 
World War II, uh, Korean War, you know, Kennedy, space, oil crisis, Iran, um, you know, stock market crash, uh, you know, property crash, uh, dot-com bubble, um, 2008, now we're in the pandemic era. So can you explain to me, George, from your perspective, as you see it, obviously there's never been anything like that. Uh, by the way, George is 92 years old. 92, isn't that crazy? And still gets on planes, um, still goes everything. So George, from your perspective, tell us what's going on right now from your perspective and where do you see it? A lot of people here uncertain, there's fear. Um, you know, doom and gloom is among us. People have lost their job. People are not working. People are on hold. People don't know what's going to happen. So from your perspective, please tell us. Well, from my perspective, it's basically been the same. And as it's always when, when there's a time of, of change or trouble for you, what? That's when the, the, the good people, the, the people that are smart get started. You don't. You don't wait for it to get better or say, well, maybe it'll get better, but you jump in and you do something different. And I did something different, as you know, at that point, early on at that point, I established a radio uh, company. And we started at this point, radio was, was having trouble with uh, get, keeping an audience. And I started with, we started with hard rock when nobody else did it in hard rock. This is back in the 1960s. Nobody heard of it, but we said, yeah, but it's new, the kids like it, let's do it. And it started and became a, a tremendous empire, not empire, minor empire, while I was still practicing law. But at that time, everybody when it started, I'd say, you're crazy. Why would you buy a pay for a radio license where you have no audience? And the same thing, this, that's the time. And I'm looking at what you, what's going on right now. It's an ideal, perfect time for those that are created to take advantage of everyone else being overly concerned or that, well, oh, oops, what do I do now? This is terrible. So instead of what's doing terrible, it's wonderful opportunities, jump on. So some of the greatest opportunities are obviously going to come out of this as well. Where, where, where do you see the opportunities for everybody here? I'm looking at it, I'm looking at you at this to go through. I'm looking at what we're doing now. Here, with how many people are we communicating with? Uh, thousands and thousands. And where are you? Home. And where am I? Home. Home. Where is Francie? Home. Yeah, but hold on. Ask me how much money I'm making now. Wow. Zero. <laughs> I'm making zero for this. No, we're talking to a number, to how many people that there's without them being in the same room in one event, in one time, at one place. This is the future. We're looking at how are we going to communicate on a mass basis and still arrange to have the intimacy of smaller events, of smaller affairs at a later point in time. Now, that's it. You're going to go, I, I, I envision that what you got now is just the harbinger of what's going to be. Mass communication. Why? Because people don't have to go out and it's not affected by, by the virus in any way. We now can communicate, we can talk, we can see face to face. I can see you, you can see me, we can talk. And we're looking at an entirely different future world. And technology is the name of the game. If you're not into technology, go back to rowing or to doing what you want. Why? If you're into technology, you're going to be very successful, no matter how big or small a business you have. And George, this is your first webinar, right? Right. First webinar. And then Francie, who diligently helped you, now you know what a cookie is. Because I heard you were having cookie problems. And you're like, where are the Oreos? They're like, I don't have any cookies. I don't like cookies. So, George, I need to ask you this question. So, George, I need to ask you this question because a lot of people are wondering. At 92, you're sharper than most people at 40. Um, so, how, how do you do it? You still have your health. You still walk around. You're, you're, how is it at 92? I mean, I see people at 60 get on the plane at Southwest. And they look like... I mean, they're dying when they're, when they're getting on the plane. They, they get cured when they get off the plane. Uh, suddenly, they don't need a wheelchair. They've been cured. But um, from your perspective, George, what's the key to that youthfulness, that, that sharpness? Um, it, you know, I know a lot of it has to do with you and me 
and how I complete you. And, and now that I'm on your will, where all the Ross Foundation money is coming to me to help support these webinars, you said technology, this, your hundreds of millions will help me. Well, Um, the answer is very simple at this moment. First of all, if you have reasonable good health, that's very important. But I think more important is that if you keep your brain active and you go and follow it, your, your body will follow and you will still find yourself that you can do things you didn't think you could do. So it's a question of really getting being challenged. And if you're challenged and you meet the challenge and do something different, uh, just to do it instead of just... Uh, advocating and say I've done enough in my lifetime I can stop at this and I get involved I sit on the board of uh, four charities and at this point and I put up with your nonsense uh, so all of that uh, you know makes me uh, invigorates me because it's, I can help so many people including you well first of all I, I'm very thankful that Francie is here she's now in a notary as well as a wedding officiator and uh, she can actually notarize the documents without me being there. So, George, can you just, just sign here, here, and here? Don't worry about it. I'll tell you what it is later. Is that okay? Yeah, you can tell me what it is, but I'm not signing anything you put in front of me. <laughs> so, George, let's talk about us, and then we're going to start taking questions from all of you here. We'll tell you when to write it, because if you write it now, we can't see anything, because uh, the, the, it'll expire. So, George, let's talk about the relationship from us, meaning 10 years, to where we are, obviously, here today. Um, maybe talk about the evolution of JT Fox, the coaching you've provided me, and also the importance of coaching and, and how you see it, our growth. I know you've worked with a lot of clients, you've been to so many of our big events and stuff like that. So from your perspective, um, if people say, describe JT Fox, um, what would you say? Well, that's an easy, it's a, it's a good question and you're easy to describe. You have to understand the people who are listening to this, that, that after having been a celebrity apprentice, that is, I was very much in demand as a speaker, and I would pay big fees to speak. And among them were learning annex and others that were motivational, uh, that they went to motive and get people to buy something or do something. And I got turned off pretty quick. I said, these people are out to make a buck. They're not really out to help these people to improve. And I got this, it, it, it isn't hardened. This is, it's not what, not what I want. I want to help people. I guess it's part of my being a teacher, also having reached that age where I don't need the money. And so when I first, when we first met, when we first started talking, I said, hey, wait, JT is different. He really wants to help the people. He wants to make them better. And he's concerned on how they, how they survive, how they exist, how they survive. I said, that's different because it's not just looking for a dollar. It's not saying, how can I make the world a better place by helping people learn and do be more successful in business and maybe their private lives. That was the big difference. That this, so I looked at you, that you had a charitable streak, streak whether you liked it or not, and that I thought it was uh, admirable in somebody teaching the world. So, but how would you say, you know, obviously my evolution as an entrepreneur, as a speaker, as a coach, I mean, you've known me for 10 years now, you knew how I was when I first met, how, how, would, you, how would you describe that? Have I changed? Have I improved? Have I stayed the same? You've changed uh, dramatically at this speed. But what you haven't changed is, is there's still no, there's no task that's too big for you. At this, you'll try anything at this without having the, the basic uh, follow-up with, with the staff that will make it work. So as a, an idea man, you're fantastic. As a follow-up man, you're terrible. Right. That's according to George. Francie, am I bad at the follow-up? I think that's my greatest strength, but... Uh, Francie's there. Francie's great. Yeah. Francie's great. And you built an organization. At this, and what I'm saying is if you learn how to stay away from the organization and do what you do best, I think it would survive better. Survive better? What are you saying? I'm not doing well now? So I think you're doing great. I know I'm doing great. I'm hitting records. So, of course, I'm doing well. By the way, all my competition are going out of business and I'm staying in business and, and we're thriving because they're all worried about selling stuff and I'm adding values like I'm doing here on a Saturday morning and you are as well. You're absolutely right. And I think your audience recognizes that. So the, um, uh, talk about the, I just had curiosity, the, the property market in New York City, you know it probably better than anyone. Let's just talk about the residential. I'm just curious about your thoughts. Um, things are bad, 2,000 deaths. I mean, 
in one day. No, and wait, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it. Wait, 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 talk about it. What are you, are you talking about? The real, you're talking about real estate in New York City, or you're talking about the effect of the uh, the virus on uh, real estate in or New York City? What well, What's happening right now in New York City in the property market? Nothing's being shown. Only two sales last week. So uh, forget. It. There's nothing available. What's being shown? There's nothing available. Well, it is available. There's plenty of listing. They're just not selling. I mean, these developers are sitting half empty on on uh, on buildings. No, not true. When you say not selling, <clears throat> all of the, the condominiums and buildings have been built and sold very well. Now they're not selling so well. Fine at this point, but time time will go. People are not buying because they're not cons they're concerned with having the money. This will pass too. But what you forget is that <clears throat> a few months ago, before this happened. Somebody's selling condominiums for six thousand dollars a square foot, and at six thousand dollars a square foot, they're making three thousand dollars. So now the times have changed. It doesn't go from six thousand; it goes to five thousand. Oh, look at the drop! It goes to four thousand. Still making a lot of money. Over a period of time, real estate is a superb investment, and the time to get involved with it is when it looks when everybody else thinks it's terrible, by virtue of uh, the virus or some other. Catastrophe. So it's interesting, George. If I move my chair, I can see Trump Towers in Chicago just literally from my window. Like it's right there next door. And it's interesting because in 2008, when that opened, people walked away from their masses deposits and things like that. I'm about to move in November into the premier building in Chicago. And it's kind of almost the same situation. I mean, it's not 2008 and and the wealthy are not decimated by it yet. But what do you think at this point that people should walk away from, you know, deposits and deals maybe that have uh, or reevaluated or if it's a personal home, it's, you know, what I mean, like, for example, let's say and, and it hasn't yet, but the value has gone down 500,000. I've got a $750,000 say deposit on there. Is it just better just to walk away or continue no. doing the deal? Get better at a period of time. Now, they have to reevaluate. <clears throat> Chicago is a perfect example. The building made great sense when it was when it was thought of and conceived. However, in three years, when it now came to be uh, closing, at that Chicago Chicago changed <clears throat> dramatically, and people walked away from their deposits. So now you had a, a, a lot of money, but you had no buyers because nobody wanted to come in and pay even 80% of the value. So you had to, reconstru you had to reconstruct. So ultimately, what did they do? We went back to the lender and said, look, I can't deliver what I intended to deliver. It just doesn't work. If you want to work with me over a period of time, we'll make it good, but it's not going to be as good as we both thought because a catastrophe has occurred. The catastrophe is the, the atmosphere in Chicago went down one reason or another and that's exactly what you have now right now it doesn't look good but this too shall change and the smart people and the successful people are going to say what do i do now to make the best of a bad situation the only old story if it's raining lemons learn how to make lemonade okay that's where you are so george uh one thing you do know extremely well is commercial real estate you have a lot of restaurants that have been shut down for two months and probably even longer in new york city they were already struggling with immensely high rent in New York. You have office people that are basically not going to work, so they're not necessarily paying. You have WeWork that just imploded about eight, nine months ago, and now you're adding this. So, right. So my, my question to you, George, how do you see the commercial real estate? Because it had been hot for a long time, and a lot of they say oh, some of the restaurants won't open the way it is. These small shops that, you know, they're not going to have the demand afterwards. So from your perspective, what do you see the commercial real estate market all over the world? Because we're all kind of in the same boat uh, in terms of what's happening. Yeah. Through. Let me ask you a question. How long is what, What's the target rate? Well, but here's the thing. If people don't make enough money, like if you're a restaurant, George, if you're a restaurant, George, if you're a restaurant and you got a $40,000 rent and you're open again and you're not covering it and you've been out of business for already three months. Right. And what you're going to do is the following. At this point, you're going to go to the landlord and say, I can't pay the $40,000 rent. What do you think the landlord's going to do? He'll make your rent $20,000. it will be part of your business. So you think, yeah, so you think that's, that's my question to you is that, I, I, here's my question, George. Are you seeing, are you going to see a reset in prices long-term or short-term? 
or like what what do you see? Like, do you see like every every lease, not every lease, but a lot of lease will be renegotiated uh, at lower prices and things like that. Like, what what do you see? I see at this point not renegotiate. I see that this is going to be if if a retailer can't make it make can't pay the rent he's got, you pay less rent. The landlord doesn't want a vacant space because he can't rent it. So the landlord, the owners of real estate, are now going to make less money than they did before. Okay. Over a period of time, if it's vibrant, you'll get, will you get office workers back? Yes. At a period of time. Will the restaurant business change? Yes. How will it be? I don't know the answer to that the way I envision it. And, the, and I think that, that President Trump is on the right track because what he's saying, hey, fellas, I'm going to give you all the money that you need in order to survive this catastrophe. And I'm going to give it to you for a period of time and you don't have to pay it back, but keep your people on. And the, the, the uh, people are smart enough when you go to and say, hey, how do we work out of this? So maybe the restaurants at that point are going to have less people. Like they're going to spread the tables out. And maybe and eventually people come back when they feel it's safe and we don't have to worry about the, the, the virus or the same thing that you're going. When you get rid of that, of the fear, you, 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 you eventually will, will, will survive. Over a period of time, I think it will do great. How long? I have the slightest idea. We've never been here. Of course, of course, of course. George, uh, multi-units. So these multi-units had cap rates of 2 3%. Uh, people were almost overpaying for apartment complexes. There's reports that half of one third of of Americans and many people around the world have not been paying their rent. They say the longer this goes, the goes. So um, how do you see the apartment space? Do you see a reset in prices? In so, what, so what happens with this place that they don't pay? Nothing. What do you think happens? Nobody's going to get foreclosed. Nobody's going to get out. We're going to see we have to work it out. And it's a weird situation or it comes out that you say that Landlords are going to have to work with tenants. At this, usually they don't like to. They say, "Here's the price, and take it or else," because they have other people. When you don't have somebody else standing in the wings, you got to do what's necessary. So, George, you you've dealt with some of the biggest lenders in the world, and also you know private equities, hedge funds. Are they more likely to work out with the people who own the apartments, or kind of be like tough tough luck? If you can't, just give me back the building, and we'll take it over. Or do you think they'll be more? agreeable to work with people because not not all apartment buildings or big commercial complex are backed by the big five banks that many of them are backed by you know hedge funds uh, private equity and who by the way they have to show a return and they don't necessarily want to miss up their return so maybe them taking over the 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 property is, is better suited for them here give me your keys and walk away i'll take over how do you see that they're not going to take over at that point they're going to work a deal the idea is to keep as many people in place as you can even at a lower number so you may take a you may take a hit for a short period of time, but you say when things go good, we'll have to talk again. That's what will happen when things change around. They don't want to take over. The big companies can't handle it. Not only that, they're not landlords; they're investors. There's a big difference between an investor and a landlord that's running a building. And uh, this will be the same thing when you had the mortgages which were underwater. Got this where you had mortgages too high, and that. But what happened? Banks didn't want to take it over, so ultimately they had to make deals. So, which is what, what you're going to have now. And it will happen. Fine. You just have to, if you're in a position, don't go and if you're hurt, go back and negotiate. It's fine. If you don't pay your mortgage, what do you think? You're not going to get foreclosed. They don't want the property. Not only that, the banks are not, the uh, courts are not going to let it be foreclosed. The government's not going to let it be foreclosed. So, everybody's got an opportunity to review their situation, but it's not a total crisis. If you don't pay your rent, you're not getting thrown out. If you don't pay your employees, you're going to lose your employees. That's for sure. That's the key of what's what the, uh, what's being done. Keep the employee. But if you don't have the business, you can't keep the employees. So it'll change. The same way restaurants change to fast move. And restaurants and restaurant based courts here right now. I got a lot of we got a lot of, a lot of restaurants on Long Island that are doing well. They don't have any customers. They're doing takeout and they and they, they deliver the food and they do everything else and they're as far as they operate with a much less staff. They don't need waiters and so so but you'll adapt to the circumstances as they exist. So um, I'm gonna for, before we start take questions, uh, by the way, 
with that being said, I, Francie, I have to ask you a Georgia question if you have anything, and then we'll take questions from the audience. But George, with that being said, on the other side, some of the greatest opportunities of our times in properties and business and consolidation and growth are, are going to happen, correct? They are happening now. I agree. Not going to happen. They happen right now. That, that's a result of this crisis. They're right there. You can come up with a, with a, with a, with a, a procedure or a scheme or an idea. Anyone who's got a problem is going to, going to jump at it. Right. All right, Frank, do you have a question for George? And we're going to start taking questions as well. Uh, for those of you who uh, I'll just put there, I'm tired of holding the camera for the YouTube people. <laughs> My arm hurts. Uh, Francie, do you have any questions for George before we take, start to take some questions? So I uh, just to uh, update, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. okay. Just an update if you're going to ask the question, type we are family, and the, or I am family, and then the question. Um, can you define what family is? Because people might think they're cousins. Uh, well, family would be if you have been a client of ours, coached you been to a top one, spoken or paid before, been to Omega Profits, had coaching with one of our coaches, you would be you would be immediate family. If you are a millionaire Netflix subscriber, you're a, a cousin. The cousin. And by the way, speaking of which, by the way, every coaching session I have ever done with George Ross is on Millionaire Flicks. You can listen to every advice. The first three years, it was just him yelling at me. Wow, 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 wow. You don't want to make it. Donald tried that in 1991. How'd that work out? Wow, 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 wow. Right? I, I have George down pat. And throughout the time, I just stopped arguing because I wanted to be right rather than getting right. So for those of you who are afraid of like, oh my God, JT gives you tough coaching. George has been tough, no BS, and how it is. If you want to be fluffed, right, then you know what, or get someone to agree with you, that's not a coach, that's an enabler. Um, so uh, anything you wanna say, Francie, or you start taking questions? And by the way, millionaireflix.com, get it. Also too, the reading body language course will be uploaded. I am done. I just have one more little thing I want to modify as well. And a new uh, course I'll be putting out this week called Case Studies. And um, the case studies is going to be something where I'm, I'm, I'm going to study companies that are still doing very well right now in this economy and why, and we're going to understand why. So uh, these are going to go on there as well. And also too, I'm going to have a special a surprise, uh, a special little report. Anybody who subscribes to my YouTube channel, uh, if you already subscribed, great. I'll tell you where to get it. Or if you do subscribe, I'm going to have a special report for you. Uh, that I've also created as well on top of all the other things I do. Also, every day at 4 p.m. live coaching, 4 p.m. Eastern, live coaching. Yesterday, two hours straight live on Facebook and Instagram, and it was a winner. Francie, you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to add for those of you that are new today um, and maybe were a little bit confused, we were kind of covering a lot of different topics. Um, we're going to have a JT's coaches, who's George Ross, kind of on just talking about their understanding of the market, what they think, advice on a lot of different things. Um, during the week, we're very focused on specific topics. Um, Monday is real estate, Tuesday is business growth, Wednesday is speaking, coaching, consulting, Thursday is for the marketing, and Friday is investing. So if this is your first day and you're, you're – because um, I've seen a few comments where it's a little bit all over the map, um, this is because what? today is – what did they say? No, people were just like, what is today's topic? So I think they just, because we're just kind of, they've never been on before. Got it, got it. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, we've been going nonstop content Monday to Friday. This is so kind of, it, yeah. Just so everyone knows, um, if you're looking for a specific topic, um, jtfox.com slash webinars. I'm sure Serena will put the link in for me. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Today is where we get advice on a bunch of different topics from one of JT's coaches. Right. So that's going to jump right in. Um, and hold on. And next week, Mike Slade, another one of my coaches, best friends with Bill Gates, was best friends with Steve Jobs. And um, he uh, actually worked at Apple and Microsoft. He will be on. So my coaches come on to help you. Monday, we're back to properties. The live coaching is every day at 4 p.m. on Instagram or my Facebook account. If you go on Instagram, you can actually see uh, the live coaching happening or, you know what I mean, but it is amazing. 
And by the way, George has been my coach and my right hand man for 10 years. The probably the man in the world who gives uh, Let's jump into the question. what? Let's jump into the question. Yeah, but I also have YouTube too. So I'm doing the same thing. It's not just you. There's, there's a YouTube live going. Well, let's focus on the people here because they're more important. Okay. Um, I'm family. If we are sitting on cash, should we invest right now? Or do you think the economy will go down even further? That's a question to me. Invest right now. I agree. Or if the market is further fine. Don't be, don't be, too, don't be overly cautious. Yeah. Cash is a big commodity. Yeah. Whatever it is. But be, be sure that you're investing in something that's got, a, that's, that's got a future. If you're investing in real estate, that's got a future. So, George, a, a lot of people, uh, some other speakers say cash is trash. Um, what, what, what do you say to that? I disagree with it, but what do you say with that? Well, I say cash, first of all, because what I've always said is this, that you can borrow as much as you can for as long as you can from banks. Right now, the interest rate on my banks is very, very low. Don't get don't promise to pay it back or to give them the properties or whatever is necessary. So, but uh, use it, use it. That's the time. The, the, the big force has been made when, when people didn't want to do something. Okay. Go ahead. Um, next question. How is your, per, what's your perspective on the impact on lawyers from everything going on with COVID-19? Well, I think that's a good question. The impact on lawyers has changed dramatically because of the technology. Uh, they don't need a lawyer as much. Uh, it's just not, they're not, not that friends and they, maybe they cost too much money. So lawyers now have to do more things. Uh, when I was with Trump and doing the real estate department, I was the real estate department. And this, I had one secretary doing all the building that I was involved with. Didn't need it because you could do it all on the computer. You could do everything. We never, I never spoke really to the other lawyers. We, con we conversed over, over the computer. So the law, the practice of law has changed dramatically, and I think the lawyers have to keep up with it. You don't need as many lawyers as there are, as there would be. I think it's, it's changed. I think the whole idea has basically changed. And what I found, unfortunately, is most lawyers don't understand business. And that's a big problem. If you got a do deal with a businessman, not with a lawyer who knows the law and prepares good documents, but doesn't understand the realities of working in a business. Okay, next question. What are you most proud of in your life, George? Thank you, George. Thank you. It means a lot for you. Uh, what am I most proud of? Uh, okay, what I am most proud of in my life is that I have achieved what I want. I'm financially, I'm fine. I've got a great family, and that's, that I'm very proud of that. But also that I have developed the, the ability or the desire to help people, whoever they are, be better in their, in their lifestyle and make them happier or accomplish what they want. So it is, I think it's the teacher in me, and if you can, anyone who's a teacher, you want to see your pupils, whoever they are, survive and do very good, and that's what makes it worthwhile. And I'm proud that I, yeah, I'm very real. I'm proud that I've, through JT, I've met a lot of people. Through my teaching, I've met a lot of people. Through my uh, being on the, the apprentice, I met a lot of people. And uh, all it was, and I figured maybe their lives are a little better than they were before they met, before we met. That's awesome. Um, what do you think is the most important thing you learned from your time with the Trump Organization? Uh, what I what I learned at the time uh, with the Trump Organization is that uh, well, it's not it's not it's it. First of all, people will always do what's in their best financial interest. Don't trust them. Don't trust anybody. At this to go to your button, verify. And uh, with the Trump Organization, what I did learn is the most carry the most important trait of any employee or worker is loyalty and also they have to have the ability to know that, that you can walk up and that you're going to be recognized and you're not going to be criticized for doing something that, that somebody else doesn't want to do don't hand don't do the corporate line at this and what i learned from the trump organization was that i never handled the corporate line when i say i never get it, i never got it donald would say this is the deal i want to make go make it how you do it was not, was not something he would say. And I think the ability to delegate is great. 
Is it absolutely I think it's the greatest attribute of any leader? I've been I've been saying loyalty. I've been for a lot of you understand it's all about loyalty. And by the way, I, I just want to point this out now. Where are the people that have been disloyal to me? Where are they now? Ask yourself that. Where are they now? How's their business? And then none of them are doing well. There's not one of them. In fact, a few of them are trying to come back. Um, George, what, uh, same question as Francie finds another question. What have you learned from me uh, in the past 10 years? Well, this video, you know, I've got to shut up. <laughs> When we've said something and more and do the answer, but you wanted me to give you the answer, and when it finally arrived, tell you this is what you do, you don't. That's the key. You follow up on what I said. When you make a decision, when it's done, you may not like the decision, but you got the guts to stick with it and immediately activate it. Most people say, well, I'll wait another week, I'll wait another month, I'll wait another year, and as a result, they miss the opportunity. If you got to change, change to make, make it. As hard as it may be. Uh, George, one other question that keeps popping up. Why should people have a coach and how important is coaching? Hmm? Uh, why should people, why is coaching so important? Why can you, you know, people say I have to spend money. Why would I spend money on coaching? It costs money. If you have the right coach, when I say the right coach would be somebody that has no financial interest in your business, but has an interest in you making you better. At this. If, that, if that's what you had, they have to be totally realistic and tell you that what's, what they think is good, what they think is bad, and give you the straight scoop, not to tailor it. Don't give you what you want to hear, give you what you should be said, what should be said. And that was how it was. I never told Donald, never told Donald in all the times, anything but what I thought should be done. I never told him, I didn't care whether he did it or didn't do it, and the, the final decision was up to him, but I gave him my unvarnished opinion. I was his, kill, his coach, and I think that's what you need in a coach, an unvarnished opinion, no financial incentive to tell you what you'd like to hear. Hey, by the way, before we answer Carlos's question, because it's borderline obsessive, Carlos, do you have millionaire flicks? And by the way, is Ted on? Is Ted dead? We haven't talked about Ted in a while. Long story, George. Uh, um, I, we haven't seen Ted uh, lately as well. Does, does does Carlos, before I answer his very specific question, does he have millionaire flicks? Um, so George, um, right now there's a, there's a lot of free time, meaning you know people are at home and what should people do with this time right now? What they should do with their time is figure out where we're going to, what can I do that's innovative in, the, in this, the, this atmosphere? How can I, how can I go, guys, don't, don't be, oh, it's terrible, I don't know if I can go out, I don't know if there's, good. There's always opportunity. Spend the time making the opportunity work. And can concentrate on that. See, not how bad it is, what can I do for me when it gets better, because it will get better, this will, this will resolve somehow. And we don't know how, but it will be, it's not going to be forever. George, how, do, how does one overcome fear? Fear it right now or in general, people have fear of spending money, fear of taking risk, fear of what other people think. How, how does one overcome fear? How are you so fearless? Because it's, what have you got to fear? The worst will happen is you lose. Big deal. You start up. You wow. Else, you work. That's how you learn at this point. You learn. There's nothing, nothing to fear. Yeah, I'm making the right decision, the wrong decision. Time will tell whether or not you did what was appropriate and you had the courage to stand up and do something that works. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new Ted and his name is Carlos. He has a 28 unit apartment deal and he's raising capital for it and he's worried about the market value in two years. My question to him is, does he have millionaire flicks? And his answer is, and, 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 and I'm reading this correctly, once you give me access, I will. For that reason, you're fired. Bam! I do not answer that question. That is a Ted and Carlos show. So, wait, but he said I am family. So did he lie about being family? No, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know who he is. So, so I'd have to see people's faces rather than their names. But he may be like, is he scamming the system by saying his family is not? But it was more like the answer of like, when you give me access to the $20 and I'm trying to raise money for a 28 unit. So, George, why are people so cheap? When it comes to investing in their education, I spent a lot of money on coaching. I spent millions on coaching. 
I've always, even this morning, like when I went to the grocery store at 6 a.m., right, I put uh, in my, um, um, I was like, while I was doing the grocery, picking up things, there was like nobody there. I was listening to some business stuff, like feeding my brain, something I bought, always constantly feeding my brain. Why did, why does the people have this mentality that they can do it themselves? I mean, you've been around the block for a few times. Well, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, uh, that, that's true, but what you're, so my late thing is kind of an immediate reward. What do I get right away? You don't get right away. It's over a period of time. And I know the period of time varies with what you're doing. You have to have the courage to say, okay, I made the right decision. It's a question of time. Everything is time. It doesn't happen the way you want it. Things come up that you hadn't anticipated, but you took a chance. And if you, if the decision was good over a period of time, it'll work. So, George, in in terms of sharpening their skills, uh, even now when I call you, I get coached. I know the answer sometimes, but I tell people one percent doubt can kill you. So sometimes coaching is here's my concept, here's my idea. What do you think? Because sometimes when we have one percent doubt, that could lead us to make that. You know what I mean? It's nice to go in and have complete certainty on an idea in a business. So would you agree sometimes it's not, a coach is not just someone's gonna always just give you all the ideas, but also confirm that you're on the right track. Would you agree with that? Like maybe talk about how you coach me in our relationships and then take a few more questions. No, I was was making that point, you're absolutely right. But the thing is, if you're going into business and you don't have doubt, don't go into it. Simple as that, you have to have doubt. That maybe there's nothing else, it's not gonna go the way you had in mind. But nevertheless, I've been taking into taking that into consideration. Is that yeah, even with that doubt, it's worth doing because the upside is better. Is is going to work more than the downside happening. So it's the courage to do it, even when you think it's got a problem. So, um, Fred, any final questions for George here? As we give George the final word. No, I think we can get go ahead. I mean, there's a lot of questions. That... I mean, I mean, George, you want to answer a few more questions or? George, what about bingo today at five? It wasn't at five, it's at four. <laughs> All right, we'll take more questions if you want. Not like I got anything else to do either. Well, take as many as you want, I'm, I'm here. Okay. Um, one question that I can see, and I was a good one for everyone. If you were starting a brand new business, what industry would you want to start in, and what would be the first three things you would do? Okay, that's a good question. And the answer is very, me, is very simple. I would be involved in virtual reality and creating a stream of content which can be used by anybody but with a virtual reality viewer. And that's how they would uh, basically we would, we would connect. And just because I've seen it, I've seen it work in hospitals, and it is, as far as I'm concerned, it brings up more information and in, in a better way than what we have today. So I think the opportunity there in any business, especially in real estate, to use it to, to your advantage is there. If now, if, if I want to set, want to sell you a building, want to sell you a, a house, and I can now show you the entire house as if you were in it with everything involved, I think that's a tremendous selling tool. So that's where I an area which I think would, would be a, certainly available to any industry. And I think the price of the viewers are going to go down. And I see it's a question of getting the right information in the right place. But I can see that it's a, it's a way, a different way of selling. And I look at that, if you can find a different way to sell, that's the way you'll be successful in whatever you're selling. So George Zolt, our Golden Circle members, ask, what do you think about the uh, Airbnb right now? Obviously, they just kind of, kind of, you know, everything's at stop because, you know, obviously of what's happening right now. Where do you see the future of, of, of Airbnbs, you know, short-term vacation, lots of regulation, some places, some are not. Where, where do you see the future of that? I, in the future, I see that's, it's going to be, that's, that's, it's going to be a long time to turn around. Uh, it's going to be big problems. It's in the same way the problems the hotel industry has got to be, got to be hit. Cruise industry is going to be, going to be, killed or crucified for a long period of time. Airlines, all of these have a long downtime because they, they, they are, you, you need people. If people don't have the money and they don't go on vacations or they think I'm not going to go on vacation, then they're not, they're not going to do what you want to do. 
and that business, the Airbnb business, is uh, one people had to have money and they had to want to do it. I figured this is where it is. You're going to find it a, a, a lack of enthusiasm until things get really better or appear better. And that's the economy has to be better. People have to have more money. They have to have more confidence in doing what it, what it is, what, uh, is appropriate. I mean, what, what's, what's going to happen with the, with the football stadiums? Unless you get people. Yeah. The, what are, with it, you get people. So it's hard to be and be, unless you get people. So if you have an industry, whatever it may be, where it could survive today and improve, then that, I think that's, yeah, that's good for the short range. The long range is, going to, is, is, is a different situation. And that's long range as far as I'm concerned. You have to see things change before I would suggest uh, making a going into that area on a sustained basis. George, the future of education, New York City just announced about 30 minutes ago while we were on this webinar that the schools are being shut down until September. Yeah, yeah, no, they will be shut down until September. What do you see the future of education that now people are at home and they're learning to a different way? Do you think that that changes? I mean, obviously you're a big proponent of education. Isn't what we're doing now changing? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm asking a question. Why are you arguing with me? It's just, I'm asking a question. And I said, if this, you have to have content, which can be so, which is gone, the people can get, your students can get virtual learning through their computer, through the tablet. So instead of having to be in the classroom, the classroom has come to you virtually by television or, or uh, websites called what you like, webinar, YouTube. The future has changed. We're looking at it right now. I'm looking at you. You're looking at me. We are. We're looking at the future, and every education is going to change. Where you need people, you're going to have you're going to just need communication, not the people. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, some of your questions are just not good. I mean, also too. Thank you for those of you who want to. You want to allow me to pick your brain for ideas. I, I'm so blessed and honored to have people on here that can teach me something. Uh, with all due respect, I only listen to one man and that's the man on that video. Uh, rule number one, don't take any advice from someone who likes make less money to you unless you want to do the opposite. Um, uh, the event space, George, um, some people here, are moderators and panel people and all that. Uh, the event space, you, you touched brace on it as well. You know, will people go back to concerts? Will they go back to stadiums? Will they even go back to events, the live component? I'm not talking about right now, but I'm talking about September, October, November, December, mega success from your perspective. Of course, we're gonna have some people that come, but where do you see from your perspective that as well? Because obviously it impacts me, mega success, or even, you know, the coaching at Top One where, you know, in a small group where you coach my clients all day, you know, where do you see the, the future of that? Or is it just right now there's a bit of fear later on, people forget kind of like, I won't fly planes anymore because of 9-11 then that goes away. I'm not gonna put my money in the banks anymore. And then we all did. And eventually it's going to change or is it gonna wait till there's a vaccine? Where, where do you see that component? Because people still, I mean, we're here, George, but to be honest with you, when I see you live and you know, I can hug you and I can force you to sign documents there and, 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 and notarize them with live. It's a lot better, but there's a, there's a human connection when you're there, George, sitting next to me in a small room, coaching my clients or at Mega Success, 2,500 of the world's most successful. There's an energy that is not there on video, of course, and people still want that interaction of people. So where do you see that going? It's a question of time, so it depends to a great extent what happens with the virus. If the virus is gone, if it's safe, they've got an antibody, or people are not got to worry about. As soon as they have the confidence that we can go out and do what we did before and mingle the way we did before, then it'll come back. Until then, people are too nervous. They're not going to do it and say, "Why? Well, I'm not going to take a chance." And that's the you know, it's a question of time. Uh, I don't know what the time is time for you, but it will definitely, in my estimation will certainly change when they, when they no longer have to be afraid. 
By the way, George doesn't know anything about Bitcoin. I do, so let's leave the non-Bitcoin. Bitcoin will continue rising, going up and down. If it goes down substantially, people will sell off and go back down, but it's not going anywhere. It's here to stay, but not at the levels that people think $100,000, you know, $100, $50,000. Um, it's a form of currency, but again, when you invest in Bitcoin, you're either gonna lose it all or you're gonna make a lot of money, be mentally prepared for that as well. For example, everybody was talking about how hot blockchain is. You're not hearing that word as much as you did before. But again, as technology advanced, George is completely right. Virtual reality, then AI, and then robotics. AI is huge. Yeah. Um, George, uh, before, by the way, if you guys want to hear George coach me every single month, the advice he gives me is the advice you can use, Millionaire Flicks, get it, as well as every coaching I've ever done in the last 10 years with George. First three hear him uh, yelling at me, um, and every advice he's given to me has always been pointed on the importance of a coach. Um, George, what have you realized? So we've been locked down for 30, to, for 30 odd days now. Uh, it's still going probably for you for another 45 to 60 days, maybe 30 days, but I think it'll be longer. From your perspective, George, what did you realize? What, what, what did you, like, what has this, what realization has being locked down about life and business and has there been some kind of realization you've had? Yeah, the realization is basically, you get a lot closer to family, you get a lot, you find out who your friends are because there's still communication, they wanna know how you are, what is, what you wanna know how they are. No, it's not, you don't see each other at this point, but you're still connected in a different way. It's not face-to-face, -face. it's over the telephone or, uh, or somewhere. But you find out really who your friends are, and as far as your enemies, you don't find out because they just don't contact you. So, uh, yeah, you can, you can learn a lot about people in a time of crisis, and certainly this is what we're at. So, um... George, any final thoughts here? A lot of people are, are listening. No one has left except for one person. So, and we've been going on for a long time here. I know you're very busy uh, with your busy schedule today, um, as we all are trying to figure out what to do. Uh, and, and any any final advice? I, I have to say, uh, go ahead, George. Any final advice? And to be honest with you, George, I miss you. Um, you know, we could be virtual and we talk, you know, every other day or as much as possible. There's that element that uh, you take things for granted. You know, you take sometimes things for granted. And as great this is, the ability of technology, but there there is that human element. And if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be the entrepreneur I am. I wouldn't be the coach I am. I wouldn't be number one. I wouldn't be the property investor, the entrepreneur, the businessman. You've always given me the coaching straight, no BS. And that is the style. And that sometimes that makes me very unpopular to some people. But I always go to bed knowing, like you said, that you're that that you gave your clients the benefit of their advice, the truth. Because of you, I'm much more charitable. I knew nothing about charity. St. Jude's raised millions, as you know, uh, for charity. Because of you, I've become a master negotiator. Because of you, I just, thinking big is just adding another zero. Uh, because of you, um, you have uh, pushed me to look at everything. And, and because of you, and always said, I'm here if you need me. Uh, please, because of you, your work ethic, your ability at your age to say, hey, you were willing to go to Vancouver, even when we knew that the coronavirus was starting and you're 92, most vulnerable, you're like, you know what? I don't want to let you down. But the most important quality you taught me is loyalty. And that's why your name is Loyal George, because of your loyalty. And a lot of people that are disloyal, remember the people on the way up, the, or you're going to meet those people on the way down. And unloyal people are rats. They never make it. And in the end, they always get what they deserve. When you are loyal, you may go through good times or bad times, but at least you have your dignity, your humanity, your ethics, and your values. And that, to me, I'm one of the most loyal person. I'm all about loyalty. And that's why some people are loyal to the opportunity. Some people are loyal to the dollar, not me. Loyalty, 24-7, 365. George, you have the final word. Well, I think what you're saying is People will do what most people do. What's in the finance? What they view as being in their best financial interest. And if their best financial interest means doing something to hurt you or doing something that they might not ordinarily do, they'll do it anyway. 
can't really trust them, but you can trust somebody who's been with you loyal and, uh, and has your interests at heart that you can really trust. And that's hard to find. And uh, certainly don't deal with relatives. That's the worst. Yeah, don't do business with relatives. Love them, fire them. You can fire employees, you can't fire relatives. So. What you're doing again, what we're doing now, is and from what I'm hearing from Francie, what I never heard before, was, uh, I don't, I, I'm not in on basic on it. It's fantastic. Absolutely, you're giving them information in topics which they should have information on. And not only are you giving the best information, you're qualified, yeah, you're qualified. I think you've made enough different deals and that you're really interested in the people and they can learn a lot by just look, tuning in. For sure. And you know what? I'm going to be... Will, will you come back, George? Well, I'll come in any time. So we'll have George come back as well. And yes... I'm happy to come back on a regular basis. Okay, if you, by the way, write in the comment box if you want George to come back so we can let him know uh, if you want him to come back and continue the benefit, the coaching as well. Uh, so, that, so that would be amazing. If we see enough yeses, then, uh, then we'll do it. Uh, also, a couple things. So George will be back. Listen to my coaching session with George on Millionaire Flicks. And yes, in the body language course, there is a component about how do you know if people are going to be disloyal? I can tell. The thing about rats is that it's, you can smell them a mile away. And I'm going to tell you things that people have said that have been disloyal. That'll be in the body language course that's going to come out. Uh, that's going to come out. We're going to see if we can get trying to get George on a weekly basis to come back here, fit him in on some of our webinars since a lot of you have it to do. But all I ask is this. Number one, if I'm going to bring this back and George is going to do this, add yourself on my Instagram and my social media. Share, engage, like comment. Don't worry about what your negative friends and family who are watching broke flicks, right? Get millionaire flicks. Know what I know. So when you ask questions to George, you can ask questions based on how he coaches me, not general question. Get millionaire flicks. Every one of my courses for only $20. Everything I've ever done for $20 at millionaireflicks.com. Starting Monday, webinar, back, um, 10 a.m. Eastern property all the way out and every single day 4 p.m. Instagram or on my Facebook live coaching yesterday I did two hours straight today I'm going to do one hour as well pack my CEO what do you want to say I just want to thank everyone for joining us today I know it is a Saturday and it just proves how dedicated all of you are so I just want to thank you all and we'll look forward to seeing you and by the way, George, if they were here and we were all live, you would have got one of these as well. Big hand applause, George. Loyal George, 92 years old, the most honest man. And George, we want to thank you for giving us your inheritance to all of us here, the other half. You are a great man, a visionary, George. I am so proud and I will make those hundreds of millions that you have to good use. I will buy virtual reality technology. What did you say about BS earlier? What did you say about BS? You're breaking up, George. George, hello, you're breaking up. George, you're breaking up. I can't hear you, George. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. And that's how we end the webinar with George. So there you have it. Like, subscribe, comment. This is the type of stuff we do every week. Also, get millionaireflix.com. See you later, guys. And thanks for listening. Thanks for watching.